<sighs> yes. Yeah, Xander, sorry, uh, but it's the Views Booker on the phone. Uh, they've bumped you to next week in favour of I'm Perez to Hilton. Leave me alone. Yes? Yeah, Xander, sorry to bother you again, but your mum's on the phone, insisting on talking to you, and she won't take no for an Look, answer. What, what should I do? About, I'm trying to relax. Tell her to call me tomorrow. <sighs> yes? Oh, sorry again, Xander. Uh, but your car's been towed, and apparently they've scratched it up pretty badly, putting it on the truck. And Seriously? also, it's uh, 20 minutes till curtain. What is the point? Oh, just roll VT. Relax, America, and welcome to Xandermonium, the talk show that gets you talking. I'm Xander Gibb, and on today's show, we will be getting some insight into the world of self-publishing for all you budding authors out there. And we will also be looking at karaoke with DJ Brooke and asking, is it just a pastime for suburban housewives or an interest to people of all ages? More to come in a mere moment. So you can interact with me during the show via Twitter. You can tweet me at Xander Gibb. That's at symbol X-A-N-D-E-R-G-I-B-B. -B. Make sure to follow and keep up to date with what's going on on the show and a plethora of interesting information. And now it's time for Xander's Soapbox. <laughs> So recently we said goodbye to Joni Malinsky, AKA Joan Rivers. And whilst it's very hard, I think she would be kind of bothered of people still being sad at her passing. She would have had some quirky commentary to illuminate our day and turn that frown upside down. I mean, it's kind of hard not to be just a little sad when an icon dies. And let's face it, love her or loathe her, she was indeed an icon as a comedian. And I really did look up to her and loved her unapologetic outlook. And it really taught me so much about being true to my comedic calling. Now, not everyone will get you or appreciate your stylings, but your audience will ultimately find you and not the other way around. I am, however, convinced that Joan's life experiences taught her a lot about taking on the chin and moving on as her life was far from simple. She was a doyen, and I don't ever remember a time she wasn't around. Um, even when I lived in England, she was popular there too. Can we talk was her catchphrase. And although I never met her, those of my friends who did had nothing but good stuff to say about her and her support for the community, which really set her apart in my eyes. Now her commitment to the charity God's Love We Deliver was so selfless and she even delivered food and a smile herself to those sick in the community. And this was not a self-serving commitment or one designed to get publicity. She was a native New Yorker and it was where she was born and where she died and where her heart clearly was. Someone wrote recently that God clearly needed a good laugh, taking Joan and Robin so close together, which in a way made me smile through the sadness. Our thoughts and prayers go out to Melissa and Cooper. And Melissa recently said, my mother's greatest joy in life was to make people laugh. Although that is difficult to do right now, I know her final wish would be that we return to laughing again soon. I'd like to dedicate today's show to Joan Rivers, Mishpacha, Baruch Dayam Ha Amet, and save me a seat, Miss Rivers. Good night and God bless. And now it's time for insight. So, so many people have asked me 
just how I managed to get a book deal for my debut novel, The Platinum Prequel. And this, the answer is very simple. I didn't. Now, that's not to say I don't have a good product, but getting a publishing deal is very hard nowadays, unless you're very lucky. Now, it is now possible for absolutely anyone to self-publish any kind of book, from a novel to a cookbook to a how-to guide and anything you think of. The hard part is coming up with an idea and being disciplined enough to write every single day and actually get it finished. Now, everyone's commitment level is different, but as Jackie Collins said, even if you write a page every day in a year, you have a book. So what then? You finish your book, what's the next step? As we all make mistakes, it's imperative to read your book through several times, checking for continuity, spelling, and tense mistakes, etc., before you find yourself an editor. Now, there are lots of mediocre editors out there, but you really do need to find a good one, and don't just go on the recommendations of others. Go to Amazon and check a couple of books they've edited. As you get a few chapters for free, this will enable you to check out their work. Now, once your project has been edited, read it again, because even editors are fallible. Now there are several ways to self-publish, and I was assured I would need a company to do it all for me, as it would make it easier. I paid a fee, they Kindleized my book for me and uploaded it for sale on sites like Amazon and Barnes and & Noble and iBook. Now, I found out after all of that that I could have got the software for free to Kindleize my book, which is the main format for eBooks, and I could have set it up for myself by visiting Author Central on Amazon and setting up an author account for free. Now, after setting up an author page, you can load your book into the system, and within a couple of days, it becomes live, and people can buy a copy. You don't have to be highly skilled to do this, and alas, I will be doing it myself the next time I write a book. So the next step is to market your book. Now, one thing I did was, uh, for six weeks leading up, was to issue teasers about my book and also wrote a synopsis to display with the book cover, which I also designed myself. Now, when was the book was live, I tweeted it to all of my friends and asked them to share. Now, some did, some didn't. But, you know, people aren't going to always do what you ask them to do. So, writing and publishing the book is only part of the process, and marketing is just as imperative as to ask people to read your book and review your book and also get them to share the links to where your book is sold. Now, it only takes a little while each day to market your book and keep encouraging others to do so. So what are you waiting for? Get writing, make notes and observations and write down your ideas and you will be surprised how quickly a story can come together. Your mind is full of interesting facts and experiences, and they do say write about what you know. Even base it on some of your own experiences. Build upon them. There is no limit to your imagination, and there are no rules. You can make magic happen. You can even fly. Own your own story and feel the characters, and know them more each time you write about them. Now, they do say that everybody has a story in them, maybe more than one. So take that bold step today. Pick up a pen, open your laptop, and just let it flow. And when you are on the New York Times bestsellers list, you will wonder why you didn't try before. And that was my little insight into self-publishing. Now, if there's a subject you would like us to give you a little insight on, you can contact me at xander at xandergib.com. Please don't be asking about nuclear fission or genetic engineering, as I'm not even going to begin to tackle those subjects. Oh, no, sorry. And now it's time for Out and About. So this week, I went out to J.C. Fogarty's in Bronxville to check out the 
phenomenon of karaoke with DJ Brooke from Big City Karaoke and the Gang. Let's check it out. So I'm here with DJ Brooke from Big City Karaoke to talk about the phenomenon of karaoke. So let's get it out of the way first of all, Brooke. Is this just a pastime for Bored Housewives? No, this is a pastime for everyone, every walk of life. So what kind of people do you get coming along to your karaoke gigs? Um, everyone from homeless people to doctors, lawyers, Fortune 500 people, you would be amazed, even children. But not to the bars, that would be a little weird. <laughs> right, so you do parties and that kind of thing too. Yeah, we have well like a whole as... kid party division. Mm -hmm. Right, brilliant. So if I was going to have a party, how would you set yourself above everybody else to get my business? What kind of things do you do that everybody else doesn't do? Well, first and foremost, I stress our professionalism. If you book a DJ with us, you're going to find someone that's on time, reliable, all the equipment works, you're never going to have any like last minute heartaches. Um, we have an expansive music collection. We update our music every month, so you're going to hear things that are right on the radio. Right. That's especially great for the kids' parties because, you know, all I hear now for them is Frozen. They all want to hear all the new stuff. And, um, and yeah, I mean, we're going to do our best to really make your party happen. And you're talking about the movie Frozen, not the Madonna track. Let's just clear that up. Oh, you're people. dating yourself, Xander. I know, I'm very dating. <laughs> So um, tell me, what, what's your funniest experience of DJing at a karaoke mm. gig? Oh, what kind of crazy things have happened to you? There's so many things to choose from. I mean, this one place that I work at is literally just the craziest karaoke place. I've seen people drop trow. I've seen stage dives. Um, but one of the funniest, most personal stories I have is um, this girl comes up to me and she goes, Hey, you got to put my song up closer. I know DJ Brooke. <laughs> and I was like... What? You know DJ Brooke? And she's like, yeah, I know DJ Brooke. You gotta put it up soon. And I was like, I just stared at her like completely blankly, like, what are you trying to pull? Um, yeah, and she's like, oh my god, you're DJ Brooke. Oh. You know, that whole thing. But <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. So do people, uh, when, when, they, when they choose their song, they put their song in, do they come bug you all the time and say, am I next, am I next? When is my song coming um, up? Often. Right. Yeah, it depends on... See, last night that I worked, it was kind of crazy because everyone came in at approximately the same time, between 10.30 and 11 o'clock. So they're all picking their songs and putting them in right away. Right. Literally, what could be a three-minute difference between one person's song and their best friend's song could mean an hour difference because... If 10 people put songs in between those three minutes, there's the difference. 12 songs an hour, five minutes a song. It's just how it is. Absolutely. So you said you do a lot of children's parties. What kind of things do you throw into the mix for children's parties? Um, well, we do DJ lighting. Um, we, we dance with them. We can do like all of the, the line dances, the cha-cha slide, and Brilliant. all of that stuff. Um, the party planner that I coordinate with, she offers um, a buffet of, with chocolate fountain. Wait. All sorts of things that add-ons that kids like. Face painting. But this is not just in the Bronx, is it? This is all over the... Um, you book us, we'll go so tell me, what to. is the most requested song? Now, I think I know what you're going to say, but let's see. It's definitely Journey Don't Stop Believing. I thought you would say that. Although I have seen a slight decline in that lately, but it's still, I think, the most popular one. Right. Other popular ones are anything Bon Jovi, Madonna Like a Prayer, pretty popular. Right. Now, I, I like a, a, a lot of British songs. Do you have a lot of British songs in your collection, too? Um, yes, we do. Brilliant. That's great. So, what's the first step if I say, right, I, Xander Gibb, want to book a karaoke party for my birthday. Where do I find you? Are you on the internet? What's yeah, your web address? Yeah, you can address? check out our website. It's um, www.bigcitykaraoke.com. I'll spell it out. B-I-G-C-I-T-Y-K-A-R-A-O-K-E.com. And you'll find all of our contact information, pictures, and examples, and also our songbook if you want to peruse it. Check out what we have. Brilliant. That's great. So shall we go sing some karaoke? Let's do it.
today i hope you enjoyed the show and that you'll join us again next time don't forget to add yourself onto the mailing list at xandergib.com and follow us on social media thanks to dj brooke from big city karaoke and the folks at jc fergadies in bronxville be sure to check them out for their wednesday night karaoke and on social media too and at bigcitykaraoke.com Thanks to everyone who worked on today's show, and most of all, thanks to you for watching. Don't forget to check out my book, The Boy From Beyond the Ice House. If you're watching this on YouTube, click here to subscribe and stay cool in the boogie down. And we'll see you next time on Xandermonium. I love you all. Bye-bye.